President Trump yesterday raising eyebrows at the White House while posing with top military leaders for a photo op, saying the moment represents the calm before the storm. But then the president refused to give any further explanation. Watch. You guys know what this represents? Well, maybe it's the calm before the storm. What's the storm? Could be the calm, the calm before the storm. What storm, Mr. President? You'll find out. So what storm? Let's bring in former Air Force Assistant Vice Chief of Staff. He's Lieutenant General Tom McInerney to get to the bottom of this. So, General, good to see you. Good to see you, Liz. What is the president referring to? Well, uh, we don't know. There are a number of national security issues that are coming up, and he had his combatant commanders and joint chiefs of staff there for a meeting, and then they had a dinner with their wives. So I think he is trying to tease a little bit the media. He likes to control the narrative. And uh, so he threw it out, and he's now controlling the narrative because we're talking about it. Uh, so could it be anything to do with the president decertifying the Iran nuclear deal next week? I think that's what it is, Liz. And uh, oh, they've dropped out enough hints that it's going to happen. I happen to strongly support it, like Ambassador Bolton. It was a flawed deal. He said it in the U.N. General Assembly, and I hope he does it. Now, our European allies are not going to like it because of the trade implications for him, but it is the right thing to do. Is it North Korea because the president tweeting last weekend that basically um, there's still issues with North Korea? And the other question, too, about North Korea, General, uh, there's a lot of talk about should we just be on a policy of deterrence and containment because the Soviet Union collapsed without a single shot being fired, it, you know, collapsed under its own weakness? What do you think? Well, I don't believe in that deterrence strategy with North Korea, as I've told you. North Korea is a proxy for the Russians, so we cannot afford to have that kind of strategy. I do believe that he's also referring to Korea, what he's going to do. Is he going to have more uh, economic sanctions, more diplomatic work, or is he going to start moving forces into the theater? And so uh, when you're asking, I think it's all of the above. You know, so there's also talk about a cabinet shakeup potentially. Reports emerging that President Trump may replace Secretary of State Rex Tillerson with CIA Director Mike Pompeo. What do you think of that, and what effect, if that happens, could this have on foreign relations? Well, uh, of course, he'd have his own reasons, but I think you can only fire so many cabinet level people in the first nine months. I think uh, Secretary Tillerson did a very good job last Wednesday on requiting himself. And uh, so we'll have to wait and see, but that could be it. You know, the other issue, too, is Venezuela. The leader of Venezuela, the socialist dictator Nicolas Maduro, saying earlier and also just the, yesterday that Russia would back Venezuela against the U.S. if the Trump administration does decide to use military force in that country. The president has talked along those lines. I mean, Venezuela, as you know, sir, they have a lot of Russian military hardware tanks and surface to air missiles. And it's, there's talk that it's using Nicaragua, Nicaragua as a conduit for these Russian weapons. What do you think about Venezuela here? Well, I think your previous question uh, on letting North Korea collapse, that Venezuela will collapse under its own weight. It doesn't have much more time. With all that wealth they have had, they have proven that socialism will fail. And so I would, uh, I'm sure the president is just going to let it fail by itself. Thank you, General. Good to see you. And thank you for your service to our country. Thanks, Liz.